Number five, the queen and the royal family. A golden thread running through the generations. That's how one of Queen Elizabeth II's many prime ministers described her reign, the longest in British history. One of the most concerningly accurate predictions our boy Michelle predicted was that in 2022, Queen Elizabeth would pass and her son would take her place, but abdicate his position. In his original writings in uh, 1555, Nostradamus wrote, At the end of the war, the great powers change. Near the shore, three beautiful children are born, ruined to the people when they are of age, to change the country's kingdom and see it grow no more. The children are Queen Elizabeth II and Prince Philip's grandchildren, Prince William, Henry, and Princess Beatrice. The conflict could refer to the 1982 Malvinas War between the UK. Princess Diana gave birth to William seven days after the war ended. Could Nostradamus be claiming that the end of Queen Elizabeth could be the end of the monarchy? Well, another writing of his adds to that. Check this out. Because they disapproved of his divorce, a man who later they considered unworthy, the people will force out the king of the islands, and a man will replace him who never expected to be king. Now if you're like me and you struggle a bit to decipher centuries old riddles, there are experts like Mario Reading, a British author, to do it for us. Reading explains the thinking, writing that after the queen's death, Prince Charles will be crowned and become king of the islands. That part's already happened. However, a certain proportion of the British population following his divorce from Diana still persists that the pressure on him is so great and his age so much against him that Charles will agree to abdicate in favor of his elder son, Prince William. So it sounds like before he was even born, Nostradamus could sense that no one wanted King Charles. That obvious, huh? And hey, here's a prediction from me. By the end of this video, you'll subscribe to Top 5 Scary for scary videos every day and the best hosts in the game. I got a strong feeling I'm right. Here's an ominous one for you. Humans, it says, are without doubt responsible for global warming and will pay an ever-increasing price. That includes more of what we've already seen this year, parched fields, forests on fire, and deadly heat. Like the sun, the head shall sear the shining sea. The black sea's living fish shall all the boil. When Rhodes and Genoa half-starved shall be, the local folk to cut them up shall toil. Well, thankfully, we're not quite at the point of literal boiling fish in the sea, but that's not to say we're not rapidly approaching that reality. It's easy to interpret, like the sun, the head shall sear the shining sea, as a warning for the increasing rise in temperatures we've seen across the globe this year. 2022 has already been a record-breaking year for climate change, and not in a way that's particularly good for anybody. July of 2022 was one of the hottest months globally, among the top 10 hottest in global history. But it's fine, I'm sure we just need to walk to work a little bit more, use paper straws, and we'll really get a handle on this thing. The death of coral reefs, eradication of natural habitats, and the worrisome decline in fish populations worldwide could all point to Nostradamus being right about this one, predicting boiling fish and the common folk starving. I'm not trying to scare you too much, but some experts predict that if we keep going at the rate we're at, the world's oceans could be totally empty of all fish by 2048. For my own sake, I sincerely hope Nostradamus is wrong about us in this one, because if I'm ever at a pub and I can't get a clam chowder or fish and chips, I just don't know that any of this will be worth it anymore. Number three, man. Did this guy only ever predict depressing stuff? Could he not have just predicted just once that maybe it would be beautiful weather year round, the Leafs would have a good season, and the McRib would come back? No, sadly it was mostly doom prophecies. Check this one out. No abbots, monks, no novices to learn, Honey shall cost far more than candle wax, so high the price of wheat that man is stirred, his fellow man to eat in despair. International political instability, the cold pandemic, and Brexit have all contributed pretty nefariously to inflation. And let me tell you, as a guy who struggles to balance his checkbook, it has been a nightmare finding cheap honey. Oh, I'm serious, go on Amazon right now. Google raw honey and candle wax. Of all the things for a sage to be completely accurate on, I wasn't expecting it to be the economics of honey and wax, but hey, it's real. This is a personal issue I'm gonna have to set aside for now. But one has to wonder too with the phrase, his fellow man to eat in despair. Did Nostradamus have some insight into the popularity of the Eat the Rich movement? Well, that's always been a popular thing to spray paint over a bank wall or write on a poster board to take to a protest. After the pandemic, that sentiment has been more pronounced than ever in recent years with large swaths of the population rightfully being upset about wage and income disparity that exists. It's hard enough for the common man to make a living out there, let alone being able to afford good, reliable honey. And if you know a supplier for that, drop a link, please. My DMs are always open to talk honey. Number two. If you asked me five years ago to predict what the future of finances would look like, I don't think I ever would have guessed the rise of NFTs or cryptocurrency. I mean, I don't think anyone could have estimated that we'd ever have an economy based around trading pictures of bored apes wearing sailor hats. Well, except of course Notre Dame could have predicted it, because he predicts everything. Could the French seer have predicted cryptocurrency? 
Take a quick listen to this. The copies of gold and silver inflated, which after the theft were thrown into the lake, at the discovery that all is exhausted and dissipated by the debt, all scripts and bonds will be wiped out. Recently, gold has been surging, and a whole wave and movement was born around moving towards cryptocurrency, especially Bitcoin, as a new infallible gold standard. Waves of Silicon Valley engineers and executives have left their high-level positions to pursue cryptocurrency startups, and the push to try and decentralize currency and move towards cryptocurrency has been very real in recent years and growing more and more. Could we really move away from physical cash altogether, especially after the in pandemic, we've seen more and more businesses and operations move towards cashless transactions altogether, moving towards all of our money being stored digitally, which stresses me out a lot because I have a hard time enough managing money when it's in front of me, let alone when it's imaginary. Maybe it's a lot to ask that Nostradamus could have predicted so much the idea of digital currency, but there's a lot to think about as ideas of a new form of currency taking shape. I've got to say though, if he really was as much of a prophet as they say he was, he would have invested in Bitcoin early, started seeing those real profits. Number 1. Keeping on his predictions about the technology of the future, could Nostradamus have predicted the rise of AI and the looming threat of a technological takeover? Honestly more likely than you think. Feast your ear holes on this little stanza. The moon in the full of night over the high mountain, the new sage with a lone brain sees it, by his disciples invited to be immortal. Eyes to the south, hands and bosoms, bodies in the fire. Now, this does sound a little bit like something a wizard in a cave might whisper you over a crystal ball before sending you on a journey, but bear with it. Some experts firmly believe that this could be an allusion to the rise of the digital era. The new sage with a lone brain sees it by his disciples invited to be immortal. I don't want to stroke his ego too much by referring to them as sages, but Mark Zuckerberg has made it incredibly clear that he believes the future of the world and humanity as a whole is going to be virtual in his quest to create the metaverse, creating a world where literally the body will be left behind. Bodies in the fire, invited to be immortal. Do you think we could get to an era where we start living like we're in the matrix, uploading our consciousness to a digital realm? What was once pure fantasy is encroaching on our reality closer and closer with each passing day, and I honestly think it'll be sooner than we're expecting before we're all living in that digital world. Number 5. Mars Landing Among his many, many crypticisms, Nostradamus wrote a light on Mars failing. Now initially, it seems like just a very Vague statement until you remember that a few years ago, the Opportunity rover, which was traveling through Mars, broadcasted its last message from the surface of the red planet. Its last message read, My battery is low and it's getting dark, which was the final transmission received from the Opportunity rover to NASA when the solar powered robot was caught in a massive dust storm, described as one of the biggest dust storms observed on Mars, which engulfed the planet whole and turned the day into night, smothering the poor robot's battery leading it to send that final, poignant transmission. Now could this be the light on Mars failing that Nostradamus was referring to? It's hard to argue that it doesn't match up just a little bit eerily, I mean come on, a light on Mars failing and here you have a sad robot saying that its battery is dying out. Of course this won't be the end of mankind's journey to the red planet. Succeeding the Opportunity rover is the Curiosity rover, which is currently roving around the rock right now as you watch this video. Elon Musk, billionaire and Twitter poster, has made no secret whatsoever of his goals for Mars, calling it his life's great greatest work and a mission central to humanity. SpaceX has made several of their own predictions about sending men to Mars, with their earliest estimates being that by 2030 we will have manned crews walking the surface of Mars. One has to wonder if Nostradamus could have ever predicted man walking on the surface of another planet. It's hard for us to imagine that, but Musk and his company insists it'll be sooner than we think. Now, Nostradamus also predicted back in his book of prophecies that you would subscribe to Top 5 Scary for the best scary stories and content on the web. Was he right? Because I'm pretty sure he was right. Number 4. Civil Unrest In that big old book of chilling quatrains, our good friend Nostradamus had this to write. The trumpet shakes with great discord, an agreement broken. Lifting the face to heaven, the bloody mouth will swim with blood, the face anointed with milk and honey lies on the ground. Probably the most outright sinister sounding of any of Nostradamus's prediction, unless the trumpet shaking with great discord just means there's going to be an awesome marching band parade going through the world. This one could mean a lot, but 
Analysts and experts of Nostradamus' work generally agree that they think this is predicting a time of great civil unrest dated for 2022. In the last couple years, we've already seen more civil unrest globally than we have before, with protests all over the globe for a number of social causes and pressing concerns. It's not unlikely at all to think that this sleeping discontent in the masses is going to keep rising, and it's very likely, very likely there will be more protests. This could tie in with a point we made in the previous Nostradamus video in which he highlighted a prediction for 2022 that said he believed that inflation and starvation would rise so much that so high the price of wheat that man is stirred to his fellow man to eat in his despair. Now obviously that could be taken literally and I sincerely hope not because I don't think I would taste good at all. I'm, I'm a bit stringy and I eat terribly so I would be awful for your diet. No, instead Myself and others think that it's alluding to the eat the rich sentiment and movement and that these two predictions are linked together. You know, we've already seen so much unrest and so many protests for years from people struggling to get by. And as wages stay the same and working conditions worsen across the globe, it's increasingly worrisome that maybe someday it's all boiling into something really, really big. Finishing off in the original quatrain, Nostradamus wrote, sooner and later you will see great changes made, dreadful horrors and vengeances. So maybe there's some positivity out of it, you know, some great changes, maybe we'll all get a four day weekend. We just have to ignore the dreadful horrors, I guess. Number three, a world at war. War, what is it good for? Absolutely nothing, I think is the usual accepted answer. Well, that good for nothing horseman of the apocalypse is always rearing its head, and Nostradamus predicted that we'd be experiencing a lot of them. A passage reads, Blue head shall white head harm in such degree, as France's good to both shall air amount. Now, I, I, gonna be honest with you, I have no idea what that means. Uh, that doesn't really sound like much, unless there's a war of blue-headed people. I found one reading saying that this was predicting that France would be beaten at the World Cup, which is definitely possible, but I feel like Nostradamus would shoot a little higher than making sports bets. Most analysts seem to think that this point towards a war, so take a listen to this passage as well. This one reads, seven months the great war, people dead of evil doing. Ruin ever shall not fall to the king. Now this prediction spells it out a little more clearly. Nostradamus thinks that there's going to be a great war that will spill over and into Europe and that France will be a key player and a battleground for it. It's easy to see why this prediction could ring true, especially with how things are, you know, going the way they are right now. There's already enough tension brewing and I think the threat of a world war is something that's kind of looming in the back of everyone's minds already while we watch the news. While there is always a war burning somewhere across this globe, this prediction specifically outlines that this could evolve into something much, much bigger. Into a great war, possibly, instead of one of those humble good ones. I'm joking, of course, there are no good ones. Possibly involving the entire planet in a global conflict. And while I'm sure a great war might make for a few good Hollywood action movies years after the fact, I think we should all work to avoid a third world war. Most trilogies usually have a really disappointing third one, you know? Let's just hope for our sake that Nostradamus isn't accurate on this one. Number two, an asteroid. A great fire will fall from the sky for three nights. The cause will appear both stupefying and marvelous. Shortly afterwards, there will be an earthquake. I doubt Nostradamus had ever seen fireworks, so the prediction of this being that we're all gonna have a great party with fireworks for three days and then we're gonna party so much it'll rumble the earth, I don't think that's super likely. No, fire from the sky and earthquakes are never a good thing. That's usually kind of the symptoms of like apocalyptic stuff alongside boiling seas and demon walking the earth, fire raining down. Now this line could refer to a couple things, possibly. It could be alluding to something man-made, like a strike of some kind, but translators and experts of Nostradamus' writings believe that this could be referring to an asteroid strike on the planet with devastating impact. Asteroids pass by the Earth every single day already, and the likelihood of one colliding with the planet and causing serious damage is a real possibility, and all of us going the way of the dinosaurs. Fortunately for us, NASA has been cooking up predictions of their own, and they assure us that there is no danger of any collisions on record for 2022, or for the next hundred years, for that matter, claims a recent study. The asteroid Apophis was said to be flying worryingly close to Earth's orbit on track for a possible collision in 2029, and as well, a slight risk of collision in 2068. But thankfully, continued monitoring and updated scans have shown that everything should be all clear for the next hundred years. Nice to know that the seer can get wrong once every once in a while, you know? 
keeps them humble. Of course, there is always the possibility, like I mentioned, that that great fire falling from the sky could be referring to something a little darker than an asteroid. Like I said, maybe something man-made or something a bit more cosmic, like say a celestial fire of some kind. Speaking of celestial fires, actually funny, that's so funny, I was just talking about celestial fires earlier. Let's get on to the next point, which is number one, celestial fire and the new world order. Celestial fire and the new world order sounds like they would have been the absolute coolest 80s prog rock supergroup. I bet their first album was fantastic and the rest of them fell off. Disregard that fantasy for a minute and let's get back to the topic at hand. Nostradamus's predictions. In his big old book of prophecies, Nostradamus wrote that there would be a celestial fire on the royal edifice. So what does that mean? King Charles' house is about to catch fire? Well, something about the word celestial really throws this one for me. You know, celestial is not an adjective that you just toss in willy-nilly. I feel like that's reserved for when something is descending from the cosmos, end of days, apocalypse stuff. Well, not to worry. This prediction gets worse. They always get worse. The prediction goes on to state that through the ashes of this celestial fire, on the royal edifice will rise a new order, hey, another prog rock group, and that an unlikely alliance between two great powers will come together. What those two great powers could be, though, is anyone's guess. Is it Marvel and DC? Apple and Android? Coke and Pepsi? Whoever it may be, it's said that things will never be the same and the Alliance's effect will not be good for us. Now, Nostradamus wrote many predictions on the royal family, and some even claimed that he accurately predicted Queen Elizabeth's passing. He had this to add on about King Charles specifically. Because they disapproved of his divorce, a man who they later considered unworthy, the people will force out the king of the islands, a man will replace who never expected to be king. Could this be referring to King Charles being replaced in favor of a new king? Could this be related to this new world order? Order Nostradamus is predicting with someone no one ever expected to be king and that unlikely alliance getting formed. We're not sure yet, but as time goes on, more and more of Nostradamus' predictions keep turning out to be true, so we'll find out soon enough, I'm sure, and you'll find out here. Number five, the Great Fire of London. The Great Fire of London was caused in 1666 after a bakery caught flame and spread rapidly throughout the city. Engulfing the city in a storm of flame that lasted for a three-day blaze, consuming just about everything in its path. The bakery was owned by Thomas Fariner, who went on record saying he was very, very, very sorry. It was the kind of freak accident that no one could have possibly seen coming. Except, of course, if you were renowned predictor and possible psychic Michel de Nostradam, who had this eerie prediction written down. Listen to this little quatrain. The blood of the just will commit a fault at London. Burnt through lightning of 23's the six, the ancient lady will fall from her high place. Several of the same sect will be killed. We really need to look into getting like an in channel researcher and translator for Nostradamus, because instead of that, you just got me, a guy who passed high school English with a 51%, but I will do my level best for you. We can interpret 23's the six as an equation, reading 20 times three plus six, which would give us 66. The Great Fire, of course, started in 1666 and burned for three days straight. Seems a little too convenient to just be a coincidence, right? Now the next question though, what is the ancient lady? The spirit of London itself? A way too early prediction about Queen Elizabeth? It's also a little bit off the mark with the quote about lightning, since it wasn't a lightning strike that started the Great Fire, but rather a bakery fire. Unless you consider that Thomas Fariner's idea to open a bakery was a lightning in a bottle idea, but I'm gonna be honest, that's enough of a stretch, it's making my shoulders hurt. Now I'd like to try a little prediction of my own. I don't quite have the gift, but I've got a knack for this sort of thing. I'm having a vision. I see that the best scary content on the web is at top five scary videos, and if you like it, you should subscribe. I don't know what it means, though. Number four, the atomic bomb. Could Nostradamus have predicted humanity's darkest invention? Very possible. A quatrain seemingly references, impossibly, the bombings of the Japanese cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki at the end of World War II. In his quatrain, Nostradamus wrote, Within two cities, there will be scourges the likes of which has never seen. Famine within plague, people put out by steel, crying to the great immortal god for relief. Hey, Nostradamus really was a cheery fella, wasn't he? Now, I like to think of myself as a bit of a skeptic. I took the online test and it said I'm 70% Scully and 30% Mulder. But even I've got to admit this one lines up pretty eerily. The two cities could very easily be referring to the two cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The scourges the likes of which is never seen, being about atomic weapons as a whole, the controversial nature of which goes without any further explanation. 
I mean, you can find about a thousand quotes from just about everybody involved with the Manhattan Project, expressing their deep regret for what they did. The famine and plague could be referencing the radiation sickness and numerous other issues that arose following the immediate aftermath. As well, the line, people put out by steel, could be an allusion to the man-made nature of the desolation. That it was constructed by man, and delivered through an airplane and a concentrated team effort, rather than any natural causes. It's worth bringing up that Nostradamus did have a personal first-hand experience treating plague victims, which does raise the possibility, of course, that he could be referring far more literally to two cities ravaged by literal plague, but it does beg just a little speculation as to why it lines up so well. Number 3. JFK John F. Kennedy Jr. is probably one of the most famous and tragic presidents in American history, whose term was infamously cut short by an assassin. The ancient task will be completed from on high. Evil will fall on the great man. A dead innocent will be accused of the deed. The guilty on will remain in the mist. Okay, there is a lot to uncover and unpack here. Firstly, a dead innocent will be accused of the deed. Now the official story is that Lee Harvey Oswald was the assassin of JFK, although two days after his arrest, he was fatally shot. He insisted that he was just a patsy to cover up the uh, conspiracy, and despite the official evidence pointing towards Oswald as the culprit, public opinion polls in recent years have shown that the majority of Americans do not believe the official story and suspect that Oswald was a false flag. Although we could be talking for absolutely hours if we go on about that tangent. Do some reading on this one at home. This is my favorite conspiracy theory of all time. And once you start reading about it, it is going to be all you are doing for the next week. There is so much to uncover. We could not possibly do it in 10 minutes. Continuing on the prophecy, the ancient task will be completed from on high. Evil will fall on the great man. In a very literal sense, this could be referring to the fact that JFK was shot from an elevated position. But there is also a widely recognized conspiracy theory that JFK was ordered to be assassinated by his own government, which could possibly be referring to from from on high. If Lee Harvey Oswald really was a cover story, like he claims, and conspiracists claim, then that would mean that the guilty on will remain in the mist, possibly referring to the mystery that's lingered on about the event as a whole for 60 years. It's very likely we will never uncover the real story or the truth behind what happened that day. Maybe Nostradamus knew, but He's not telling us much these days. Doesn't pick up his phone that often. Doesn't answer my calls. Number two, King Henry II. King Henry II was, well, you can probably guess. He was the king of France for a bit. He was the king of France from 1547 until his reign was tragically cut short bitterly in 1559. The tragedy that had befallen the people of France as he was slain in an accident during a tourney. Who could have predicted it, of course, except Oh, you know how this bit goes by now. Let's all say it on three. One, two, three. Nostradamus. Of course he did. It's the title of the video. Alright, let's hear what the quatrain said. The young lion will overcome the older one. He will pierce his eyes through a golden cage. The two wounds will ensure a cruel death on the field of combat in a single battle. I like that, like all of Nostradamus' prophecies, sounds like something that a wizard would tell you in a cave before giving you a sacred sword and telling you to embark on a quest to save the kingdom. Anyway, let's put on our little interpreting cap. King Henry was accidentally mortally injured when during a joust, splinters from the broken lance of his opponent, Gabriel de Lolge, was lodged inside King Henry's eye. From there, the king developed brain damage and sepsis, and would pass from his injury a few days later. It definitely sounds like the uh, cruel death that Nostradamus had predicted in his little prophecy there. Now it wasn't quite the field of combat though, instead occurring during what was supposed to be a game. What can I say? They just played harder than we do. It's all fun and games until someone loses an eye and then France no longer has a king and you have to retreat to your estate in Normandy in disgrace and live out the rest of your days as an exile. Did everybody else's mom always tell them that as a kid whenever they would go out to play? Nostradamus and King Henry II were actually personal friends, making this prediction just a little bit more tragic than usual. Nostradamus had referred to him as the invincible King Henry II, which is a bit ironic sadly since it turned out he was very invincible. Number 1. The French Revolution Now, depending on where you lived in 17th century France, maybe you didn't think the French Revolution was actually that dark a thing. Maybe you thought it was great, actually. I did hear at one point there was some cake being passed around to everybody. Wouldn't know. Wasn't there. But I can tell you that Nostradamus did seem to predict the revolution almost exactly. Why don't you take yourself a little ear gander at this. 
From the enslaved people, songs, chants, and demands, the princes and lords are held captive in prisons. In the future, by such headless idiots, these will be taken as divine utterances. Before the war comes, the Great Wall will fall, the king will be executed, his death coming too soon will be lamented. The guards will swim in the blood. Near the river Seine, the soil will be bloodied. Hey, this one I almost don't even need that translator for. I, I feel like I can actually kind of understand this one, straight up. It sounds fairly plain and simple, and really just sounds like someone describing the French Revolution. The Great Wall falling could be referring to the storming of the Bastille Prison, which was located near the Seine River, and was a site of criminal execution. This is where the guillotine was, and the beginning of the revolution. Could the guillotine be referring to literal headless idiots? The king will be executed, well that definitely happened. The only difference in Nostradamus' prediction is that he said it will be lamented. And wow, I'm sure the king's royal family was very upset. The people of France at the time seemed pretty excited to see him go. The soil being bloodied could be a dramatization or a metaphoric way of speaking to all the violence conducted in the name of the French Revolution. I've gotta say, it's pretty strange how well Nostradamus was able to predict the French Revolution and as well the passing of King Henry II, but maybe he's got a home turf advantage for this sort of thing. You can just really focus in that hyperactive lens on anything involving France. Number 5. World War III In his big book of predictions known as his quatrains, Nostradamus wrote that seven months the Great War, people dead of evil doing. Rowan Evru shall not fall to the king. Now if you've watched any of our videos on Nostradamus, You'll know that he usually keeps his predictions pretty vague and cryptic, as a centuries-old mystic astrologer is wont to do. But here he's treating us to a prediction so easy to read, even I can follow along. Nostradamus predicts that there will be a great war, and that if the quatrain is anything to go off of, Europe will be the theater for the conflict. But in a small hope spot for the city of Rouen, France, they are not going to fall to the king. Good for them. That's the only city he specified is going to be okay. Now who could this king be referring to? A world leader? An army maybe? The mascot for Burger King? I know if any fast food mascot is going to start a world war, it is absolutely that guy. Although Grimace has always been a wild card. Don't trust him even a little bit. Now obviously jokes aside, this is a tense subject. The current situation in Europe is already a cause for serious global stress and no one wants to see it develop any further, especially into a great war. Although that's a bit of a misnomer, isn't it? I'm not sure if great is the right word to describe any wars, maybe in size, sure, but I don't think anyone involved in an international war would describe it to you as a great time. The quatrain doesn't specify when, but with the world watching Europe now, it's definitely on the back of all of our minds that we hope this doesn't come true. Let's take a break from bumming each other out talking about global conflicts. You having fun with the channel? Toss the subscribe our way to catch it all. Number 4. Asteroids A great fire will fall from the sky for three nights. The cause will appear both stupefying and marvelous. Shortly afterwards, there will be an earthquake. Ever since a big rock wiped out the dinosaurs, I think it's been a little bit on the back of our minds worrying that maybe something like that might happen to us someday. If something is going to stop a T-Rex, I don't even feel a little bit confident about my odds. This quatrain here makes it seem like we've got to be watching the skies. And while I certainly hope this is just Nostradamus referring to the world's best 4th of July celebration and a whole long weekend fireworks session, people who spend a whole lot more time than me reading about Nostradamus theorize that this could be referring to an asteroid strike on our sweet blue planet, which is going to be both stupefying and marvelous, which honestly sounds very, very nice were it not for the earthquake. Lucky for us, and terrible for extinction event enthusiasts, sorry, our good friends at NASA have recently demonstrated their DART technology, short for Double Asteroid Redirection Test. And I gotta wonder how many acronyms they tried before landing on that one, because DART sounds so clean. It's a system in place to change the trajectory of asteroids. Successfully, no less. Just a few weeks ago, for the first time in humanity's history, we changed the path of a celestial object. So take that, Nostradamus. Bet you didn't predict we were going to go to space to push something out of the way. And hey, asteroids, you think you're so tough? Well take that never ending cosmos and unending might of the eternal stars. We're just going to push you right out of the way. We don't care. Number 3. Celestial Fire And before we move forward, we really got to think of a nickname for this guy. Nostradamus is just a mouthful and a half. Mussy? No, that's, that's way worse. Okay, never mind. We're just going to keep calling him Nostradamus for now. You know what, if you ghouls and goblins can think of a good Nostradamus nickname, throw that down in the comments because I am spending so much time saying this guy's name. 
Our favorite Farsi and French man with no good nicknames wrote in his big book of predictions that there will be a celestial fire on the royal edifice. So what does that mean for us? What is a celestial fire if not a Destiny 2 melee ability? Warlocks are going to dominate a new Crucible map? It's unlikely, as Nostradamus' predictions on Destiny's meta have frequently been inaccurate and most historians believe he actually would have played a Voidwalker instead of a Dawnblade. Experts in transcribing Nostradamus' work believe that this excerpt from his poetry could be referring to the destruction of the royal palace, with many believing it to refer to the royal family in the UK. So should King Charles put a big fireproof umbrella over Buckingham Palace? Some have suggested that this could be far more dramatic, referring to Buckingham Palace being completely destroyed and from its ashes a new power rising. The prophet continues to say that an unlikely alliance will occur of two great powers that will come together. Now, who would this new world order be? Benevolent to lead us to a new golden age? Or dark new overlords to oppress us all? It's always a possibility that it could be reptile people. Number two, man eating? No abbots, monks, no novices to learn. Honey shall cost far more than candle wax. So high the price of wheat that man has stirred his fellow man to eat in his despair. Now, at first, this seems like the ramblings of an old man who just came back from Walmart and saw the price of honey and is going off on a tirade. But that little snippet about man eating his fellow man sticks out just a little bit, doesn't it? This prediction is pretty directly doomsaying with our good friend and master of mysticism, Nostradamus, suggesting that in the future, things are going to get so bad that food is going to become so expensive that the common fella won't be able to afford any honey, wheat, or honey nut Cheerios, and will be pushed in desperation to start eating his fellow man. Hey, there really was not a lot going on back then if the scariest thing he could think of was honey getting so expensive that it would cause a full-on societal breakdown and cause us all to start eating man. You think they're going to sell that in grocery stores? Obviously this one is a bit drastic as far as his predictions go, and definitely a bit scary unless you're the kind of person that watches The Walking Dead and wishes, gosh, I wish that was me. And if you are, you should probably talk to someone, they just want to help. But there is some truth to this. Prices of basic groceries are going up and up every year. I mean, you can walk into the Walmart and see the price of honey yourself. With inflation creeping its ugly little head a little more each year. It's been a consistent concern as well. The bees are going to go extinct in our lifetime, with the population of honeybees declining rapidly yearly. For our sake and the bees, we need to do something to save the planet. If not just for the ecosystem and the planet as a whole, but also because apparently if we run out of honey, that's the first thing that causes us to all start going Texas Chainsaw Massacre on each other. Number one, great discord. The trumpet shakes with great discord, an agreement broken, lifting the face to heaven. The bloody mouth will swim with blood. The face anointed with milk and honey lies on the ground. Like most of Nostradamus' writings, this one sounds a bit like the opening monologue to one of the Lord of the Rings movies. And wow, hey, honey again. H honey was a really serious cause of concern for this guy. I think if nothing else, Nostradamus took his morning tea incredibly seriously. So besides crying over spilled milk and honey, what do the experts have to say about this one? Was Nostradamus banned from his Discord server and riding out against the tyrannical mods? Well, like most of the predictions on this list, this unnerving uh, quatrain seems to suggest that dire violence will plague us, with unrest between the classes leading to full-scale rebellion and riots. This little ditty seems to support that, with Nostradamus writing that sooner and later you will see great changes made, dreadful horrors and vengeances. Well, I don't know about you, but I support great changes definitely, though I'm a little less sure about dreadful horrors and vengeances. The last few years have seen more civil unrest than ever with it seeming like there's a mass scale protest or riot every couple of weeks somewhere in the world. It's easy to flick on the news and see that and wonder if it's eventually going to hit a boiling point and when it does, if we'll see some serious changes or at the very least, some positive progress towards the price of honey because I'm really not looking to get eaten by anyone anytime soon. I'm, I'm just, look at me, I'm so twiggy, I will barely even make a good snack. Just, just pass me over, okay? Number five, war. What is it good for? Seven months the great war, people dead of evil doing. Ruin Evra shall not fall to the king. Now, if you've watched any of our previous videos on Nostradamus and other end of the world prediction style videos, you know that Nostradamus and the other seers tended to keep their predictions pretty vague, but sometimes they they spelled it out simple enough that even a simpleton like me can follow along. Nostradamus is predicting a big war, a great war even, in size, not in quality. I don't think there was ever a great war.
war. If the quatrain is anything to go off of, Nostradamus predicts that the war will erupt across Europe and then ravage the countryside while hopefully keeping the city of Rouen, France in a good spot and will refuse to fall to the king. Now that part is open to a little bit of interpretation because really that could mean anything. Who could the king be referring to? Is it one particular world leader? One nation vying for power? Is it the Burger King mascot who's finally snapped and is on a war path of world domination? He's easily the most unhinged and dangerous of all fast food mascots and the one I would most expect to start a war. Now, this is obviously a delicate subject, but the current situations across Eastern Europe is already cause for enough alarm. A war that's got everybody on their toes and watching the news constantly. And I don't think anyone wants to see it develop further into a proverbial great war. A seven month great war sounds like it'd be over in a flash, but I think the last thing anyone wants is a war that's over in a flash knowing the nuclear powered arsenals out there. Shorter war is not necessarily a good thing. Nuclear annihilation is kind of the, the, the last thing anybody needs out there. Hey, hope I'm not bumming you out too much. Talking about global conflicts and possibly the end of the world, let's talk about something fun, like our fun channel. We got all sorts of scary content of just about any topic you can think of. So click through, stay scared, but stay watching this video because we got a whole lot more predictions left to go. Number four, Mars and Elon Musk. Listen to this quatrain. The two contenders will unite together. When most others unite with Mars, the African leader is fearful and trembles. The dual alliance is separated by the fleet. Uh, this one seems too perfect, you know? Immediately as I read that quatrain, maybe you made the same connection too. Mars, African leader? Immediately coming to my mind is Elon Musk, the South African billionaire tycoon who currently owns Twitter and has been extremely outspoken about his desire to flee this planet and to become the king and colonize the red planet of Mars. But who are these two contenders that have to unite together? Could it be referring to global superpowers coming together for the future of humanity? Or is it Facebook and Twitter coming together and he's just looking to buy more social medias. Some professional followers of Nostradamus' work, such as Lori Reading, has argued in favor of this as well, arguing that this is referring to the billionaire's plans for galactic domination. Another quatrain seems almost connected with this line from another verse. Take a listen. The light of Mars shall go out. Could this be again a reference to the mission? A suggestion that perhaps this dream of Mars is just that, a foolish dream, and that a colony on Mars would fail in upon itself. It also links up bizarrely well with the Opportunity Rover. If you remember that from a few years back, the little guy who was rolling around the surface of Mars, its last transmission was, my battery is fading and I'm going dark, which is almost like directly saying a light of Mars is going out. This is actually starting to creep me out here. Nostradamus might have been magic just a little bit. Time will tell, obviously, if this one remains to be true, although after Twitter, I don't know. I'm not so sure. I don't know if I want to pay $8 a month to subscribe to Mars Blue for a check mark. Number three, more plague. Oh, that's the last thing any of us need. Well, take a listen to this doom prophecy. Near the gates and within two cities, there will be two scourges, the likes of which has never seen. Famine within plague, people put out by steel, crying to the great immortal god for relief. Well, this doesn't sound fun at all. I'm not sure anybody wants this. I'm pretty sure everyone watching this has experienced more than enough plagues to last us a lifetime. Of course, it's unfortunately kind of foolhardy to think that humanity will never experience another viral epidemic because, well, germs are always going to exist unless we eradicate them entirely. So all we can do is brace ourselves for the next one and hopefully learn from the past. I mean, that's why we're looking all the way back to an old French astronomer who was writing things in the 15th century and the off chance that any of it might help us out. Well, he might be on the money with this one again because recently in 2021, researchers in Siberia uncovered in a block of ice 33 strains of ancient novel viruses. Now, novel means that they haven't been discovered before, not that they're just kind of fun and no trivia. Personally, I would put them back in the iceberg, I think, and then I would put like a tarp or maybe some tape over it. I, I think we should just deal with that where it is and we should not be bringing any ancient prehistoric viruses into today's times. I think I'm good. Now, what really concerns me about this quatrain is the picture that it paints. Near the gates and within two cities, the people will be put out by steel, crying to the great immortal god for relief. Oh, that's dramatic. 
Could this be a reference to some power taking out its own citizens? Armies firing at infected individuals? Now it could be that, but it could also be possible that Nostradamus somehow had a powerful vision into the future and he was just watching an episode of The Last of Us and he was basing his predictions around that. Good on him for not spoiling that series for 500 years. Number 2. Economic Crisis Take a listen to this. No abbots, monks, no novices to learn. Honey shall cost far more than candle wax. So high the price of wheat that man is stirred to eat his fellow man in despair. Now, I'm not an economist. I'm a YouTuber, sort of. But I don't need to be an economist to tell you that things have been getting pretty expensive and everyone's feeling their purse strings tighten up. I can't tell you how many times this week I've had pasta with no sauce for dinner. Admittedly, I don't buy a ton of honey or candle wax, so I can't really comment on how accurate that all is, but I can definitely tell you that my weekly groceries are getting a lot more expensive. The fear of course here is that I think eating your fellow man in despair really does not sound like the good option. Now there are a couple different ways we could take this interpretation. We could take it very literally suggesting that things are going to get so dire and so bad that we'll have so little food to go around that we're forced to consume one another to survive, which really doesn't sound pleasant. And while I'm talking, I'd just like to throw out here, I am way too stringy to be valuable as meat. I mean, look at me, I'm like a bird, I'm hollow, so I, I wouldn't make a good meal out of me at all, so don't, don't even bother trying over here. Alternatively, it could be interpreted in a more esoteric way. And since he's an old astronomer, I'm sure he spoke esoterically most of the time. He could be referring to the idea of eating the rich. If people get so fed up with the costs of living on just about everything and decide to revolt and strike back at the people in charge, hoping to dismantle the systems in place, which, hey, funny enough, actually leads into a segue from my next point really well. It's almost like I set that up. Number one, great discord. Take a listen. The trumpet shakes with great discord, an agreement broken, lifting the face to heaven. The bloody mouth will swim with blood, the face anointed with milk and honey lies on the ground. Like most of Nostradamus' writings, this one does sound a bit like it's the opening monologue to one of the Lord of the Rings movies, and wow, honey again. Honey was like a really serious cause of concern for this guy. I think he might not have been an astronomer. He might just have been a man who took his morning tea incredibly seriously. So besides crying over spilled milk and honey, what do our great Nostradamus experts have to say about this one? Was Nostradamus banned from his Discord server and writing in against the tyrannical mods? Well, like all of the ones on this list, this unnerving prediction seems to suggest that dire violence will come to plague us, with unrest between the masses and classes leading to full-scale rebellion and riots. This little ditty seems to support that, with Nostradamus writing that sooner and later you will see great changes made, dreadful horrors, and vengeances. Ah, uh, well. I support great changes, definitely, I'm a huge fan of great changes, but I am not so sure about dreadful horrors and vengeances, I feel like I've seen more than enough of those. The last few years have seen more civil unrest than ever, like this is the most upset I've seen people in my life, at least, with it seeming like that somewhere around the world there's a mass scale protest or riot every couple of weeks, you know? It's easy to flick on the news and you see that and wonder if eventually we're gonna hit a boiling point and we'll see some of those horrifying horrors and vengeances and all those mal thoughts that he was thinking up. And when it does, if we'll see some serious changes or hey, at the very least, maybe some positive progress towards the price of honey because apparently that's the most important cause in the world. In fifth place, we have a solar storm. So one of the most alarming 2023 predictions from Baba Vanga has to do with a solar storm which could have, um, catastrophic consequences. For reference, the term solar storm can refer to several phenomena on the sun's surface, including solar flares and coronal mass ejections, CME for short. The latter are vast eruptions of plasma that are capable of reaching the earth, causing geomagnetic storms that, uh, you know, could potentially fry power grids and cause widespread havoc. Yeah, no biggie, right? The most dramatic example in recorded history was the Carrington event of 1859. Named after British astronomer Richard Carrington, it knocked out telegraph networks 
fireworks and even caused fires and electric shocks. If such an event were to happen, say today, in our electrified world, the effects on communications, services, and everyday lives would be almost unfathomable. Experts believe the damage to worldwide infrastructures could lead to blackouts that last for years, triggering societal chaos and causing financial markets to go into a tailspin that would dwarf anything seen before. So, um, I sorta kinda hate to say it, but this prediction is kind of already coming true. Based on observations made by Dr. Erica Palmario, a research specialist who specializes in, you know, this sort of thing, there is a magnetic filament near the equator of the sun that is currently bustling with a huge amount of magnetic field lines. This means that it can soon erupt and send another wave of solar storm towards our planet. The presence of such powerful streamers is an indication of the increased solar activity, which was not predicted by many forecasters for solar cycle 25, so the current solar cycle. If the streamer goes out, it will release a huge amount of radiation and magnetic energy that can disrupt shortwave radio communication on Earth and, you know, cause a dangerous solar storm. We've already had two severe geomagnetic storms this year, the most recent being on April 21st when a CME erupted from the sun, spewing out a burst of plasma that raced towards Earth at nearly 2 million miles per hour. In fourth place, we have a bioweapon atrocity. Because if scary solar stuff didn't scare anyone enough, bioweapons should do the trick. Yep, Baba Vanga had a vision of bioweapons tests being carried out by a big country in 2023. This is easily one of the more disturbing predictions ever provided by the prophetess. It also seems relevant to the current, uh, heated geopolitical context. So uh, this had me wondering, technically what all falls under the range of, you know, bioweapons? You know, might as well prepare for the worst. So biological and toxin weapons are either microorganisms like virus, bacteria, or fungi, or toxic substances produced by living organisms that are produced and released deliberately to cause disease and death in humans, animals, or plants. Biological agents like anthrax, botulinum toxin, and plague can pose a difficult public health challenge causing, you know, large numbers of deaths in a short amount of time. Biological agents which are capable of secondary transmission can lead to epidemics, but I feel like we all already knew that thanks to uh, recent history. An attack involving a biological agent may mimic a natural event, which may complicate the public health assessment and response. High threat pathogen laboratories can be targeted, which might lead to serious public health consequences. Biological weapons form a subset of a larger class of weapons, sometimes referred to as unconventional weapons, or weapons of mass destruction, which also includes, you know, chemical, nuclear, and radiological weapons. It's impossible to know what nation Baba Vanga had in mind, and it's unclear what the extent of such experiments might be. Could it involve, you know, stockpiled viruses? Perhaps some weaponized variant that runs the risk of escaping the lab environment? Even if such a leak didn't occur, these kinds of experiments would presumably violate the Biological Weapons Convention, which bans the development, acquisition, transfer, stockpiling, and production of toxins and agents. There is precedent for violation though, with the convention having been previously broken by countries, you know, such as Russia and Iraq. The use of biological agents in armed conflict is technically a war crime, but defensive biological research for prophylactic, protective, or other peaceful purposes is not prohibited by the BWC. So you can see how a country can sadly skirt around this. Fun fact, in case y'all weren't, you know, freaked out enough, biological weapons are difficult to detect, economical and easy to use, making them pretty appealing to bad guys. The cost of a biological weapon is estimated to be about 0.05% the cost of a conventional weapon in order to produce similar numbers of mass casualties per kilometer square. Also, their production is very easy as common technology can be used to produce biological warfare agents like that used in production of vaccines, foods, spray devices, beverages, and antibiotics. A major factor in biological warfare that attracts bad guys is that they can easily escape before any kind of agency have even started their investigation. This is because the potential organism has an incubation period of three to seven days, after which the results begin to appear. Here, thereby giving them a lead. A technique called clustered, regularly interspaced, short palindromic repeat is now so cheap and widely available that scientists fear that amateurs will start experimenting with them. But uh, no biggie. In third place, we have a possible alien attack. Yeah, Baba Vanga predicted an alien invasion in 2023, with extraterrestrials being hostile and leading to the death of millions. Look, if the woman hadn't literally predicted 9-11, her own death, last year's UK drought, Obama and Trump being in power, and more, I'd be a little more iffy. She has an 85% accuracy rate for her premonitions. I could hmm and haw over this all day if I'm being quite honest with you folks. On one hand, I definitely believe that aliens and UFOs are out there. There is way too much evidence to prove otherwise, and I've reported as such many times over here. But on the other hand, I don't want to believe that a hostile invasion will happen this year. I'm guessing maybe if a bioweapon comes into existence and we take off whatever is monitoring our planet, it can make sense. Or, you know, they don't like how we're functioning as a world, which, you know, 
The world's kind of a mess, but make sure to let me know down in the comments what you think. In second place, we have a possible change in the Earth's orbit. Could the path that Earth takes around the Sun alter in 2023? So this is a particularly intriguing prophecy, and one that would have ramifications for everyone. Sure, yeah, it's one of the more far-fetched ones on today's list, but still equally as terrifying. Our planet travels 584 million miles around the sun every year, an epic voyage that is shaped like an oval rather than, you know, like a perfect circle. The precise shape of the oval is influenced by other planets' gravitational forces, meaning the Earth's orbit can and does shift. However, such changes usually take place across many thousands of years. The effects of even, you know, subtle, slow changes can be severe. For example, it's been theorized that an orbital shift contributed to the Paleocene-Eocene thermal maximum, a period of intense global warming that took place almost 56 million years ago. If a radical shift occurred over the course of a single year, for whatever reason, the effects would be apocalyptic. There might be soaring temperatures and radiation levels with terrible environmental consequences. And that's putting aside the possibility that the orbital shift hinted at by Baba Vanga might be caused by an asteroid impact, which could very well be, you know, like an extinction level event. Look, I love dinosaurs as much as the next person, but I don't really want to repeat their history. Also, I do not do well in extreme heat. At all. In first place, we have human birth in laboratories. Yep, the mystic lady predicted that human babies would be born in labs where their physical appearance and character could be controlled, completely altering the process of birth. Look, I can hear the doubters trying to laugh me off the internet right now, but Pause, give me a second before you jump into the comment section. In December of last year, a new conceptual facility named Ectolife made some major waves in the news. Oh. Why do you ask? They're advertising themselves as the world's first artificial womb facility, offering a way for parents to produce customized babies. Yeah, no, this isn't The Sims. This is reality. The concept is thanks to Hashem Al Ghali, who is a science communicator and molecular biologist by trade. The concept of ectolife is allegedly based on over 50 years of groundbreaking scientific research. The facility would run on renewable energy and plans to house 75 labs, each equipped with up to 400 growth pods or artificial wombs, which are designed to provide the same environment that is present inside a mother's womb. Parents will be able to keep track of their baby's growth and development through a screen on the pods that showcase real-time data, and that data will also be available to monitor through an app. The artificial intelligence-based system can be used to monitor the physical features of the baby and will report any potential genetic abnormalities. During the time of delivery, the baby can be removed from the pod with the push of a button. Now, the creator believes that the artificial womb facilities could become a reality in 10 years or so if ethical restrictions are removed, claiming that every feature mentioned in the concept is a 100% science-based and has already been achieved by scientists and engineers. If that isn't good enough, he's also promising an elite package that would allow people to genetically engineer the embryo before implanting it into the artificial womb. This is all starting to get a little too sci-fi horror for my liking. Parents will be able to select their baby's level of intelligence, height, hair, eye color, physical strength, and skin tone. Oh, and somehow it will also let parents fix any inherited genetic diseases. And as someone with ADHD, I'd like to know the further definition of that term, thanks. Actual Life's goal is to provide an option for parents to have children without going through pregnancy or even conception. The creator claims the artificial womb facility could help countries facing the problem of a declining population, such as Japan, Bulgaria, and South Korea, among others. It will also aim to facilitate infertile couples to become parents of their own biological offspring. Before my eyes roll out of my head, some folks who consider themselves experts have been consulted in this and claim the technology is not that far-fetched and could become a reality in the future. Andrew Shannon, a professional expert, has said that from a theoretical standpoint, it's possible and just a matter of providing a correct environment with fuel and oxygen and he thinks that, you know, the technologies are there to be able to achieve that. He's mentioned that there are a lot of examples where babies come out of the womb extremely early and are very well looked after in incubators, which he compared to this, you know, alleged technology. Number five, a dangerous bioweapon. In 1925, the Geneva Convention decided to ban the use of biological weapons in war, with all the countries making a promise to never, under any circumstances, develop, produce, stockpile, or otherwise acquire or retain microbial or other biological agents or toxins, whatever their origin or method of production, of types and in quantities that have no just justification for prophylactic, protective, or other peaceful purposes. They also agreed not to develop weapons, equipment, or means of delivery designed to use such agents or toxins for hostile purposes or in armed combat. For the most part, the countries of the world have stuck to this agreement, other than some outliers such as the Soviet Union and Iraq. 
Unfortunately, one of Baba Vanga's predictions for 2023 says that a large country will begin testing a new bioweapon. She is sparse on the details, but if this is true, which of the large nations will be carrying out the test? Will it be Russia, the United States, China, who, and what is the nature of this bioweapon? Does it contain lab-grown viruses that could wreak havoc on humanity? or some other deadly mutagen that could permanently alter the DNA of its victims. Although she has had a few predictions that came true, Baba Vanga also said that World War III would begin in 2010, and that by 2016, Europe would become an empty wasteland. So, hopefully, this is one of the predictions that turns out not to be true, as the idea of chemical weapons being unleashed this year is simply too much for me to deal with on top of everything else going on. Number four, a solar storm. With all the rather dire predictions made by Baba Vanga, it could be tempting to call her a pessimist. One of her more devastating predictions for the year ahead is that we will experience what is known as a solar storm. A solar storm refers to phenomena taking place on the surface of the sun, such as coronal mass ejections or solar flares. If one of these coronal mass ejections were to reach Earth, it would cause a geomagnetic storm that would have horrible consequences for our technology-reliant world. This kind of storm has happened before on Earth in 1859, in what has since been called the Carrington Event. Due to the work of astronomer Richard Carrington, it resulted in telegraph networks being knocked out as well as people who were operating the telegraph machines being electrocuted and even some pretty nasty fires. But it would be much worse if it happened today. Imagine, if you will, a world where all of the technology that you take for granted was suddenly fried and unusable. Suddenly, internet access and records would be lost. Communication systems that we have come to rely on to keep our world running would become useless blocks of dead machinery. A world of darkness where chaos reigns and the financial markets are suddenly put into a dramatic tailspin that we could not even begin to reverse the effects of for years. Think of the chaos that took place relatively recently in Texas when the power grid went down, and imagine what would happen if that took place all over the world. The effect of this happening now could be no less than the total collapse of modern society. This is one of the most plausible predictions made by Baba Vanga, as some scientists say that since this kind of solar activity has happened before, we are overdue for it to happen again, and that it is not a matter of if, but rather a matter of when it happens. Considering the disastrous global consequences of one of these severe solar storms, let us hope that Baba Vanga is incorrect in her prediction that this will happen in 2023. Number three, a series of viruses. Considering how ill-prepared we turned out to be for the last super virus that ravaged the world, the idea of more viruses in the future is somehow equal parts terrifying and exhausting. Baba Vanga actually predicts a few different viruses will come to light, but the soonest will not affect humans, though it is still disturbing. According to Baba Vanga, in 2023, birds will be subjected to a deadly virus that will transmit through both the air and contaminated water. It will spread incredibly fast, wiping out entire flocks in weeks and leaving many species of bird on the brink of extinction. Scientists will apparently scramble to try and find a cure for our avian friends, but the now common sight of a flock of birds flying through the air will become a distant memory. This doesn't directly affect humans, but considering how much chicken we as a species eat, this will be a tough loss if it comes to pass. Although that is the only virus predicted for this year, Baba Vanga has predicted that there will be a series of viruses over the coming decades, each one more serious than the last. 
The next virus, Baba Vanga predicts, will apparently take hold in 2088 and will be unlike anything we've ever seen. It won't cause humans to have trouble breathing or for their immune systems to be compromised, but will apparently cause people to age extremely rapidly, resulting in a young person in their 20s looking like a senior citizen within a few seconds. This virus will apparently be an issue for humanity for almost 10 years, when it is apparently exterminated in 2097. We will then apparently get a break from until the year 2256, when a rocket sent to explore the deepest parts of the cosmos will return to Earth carrying an intergalactic virus. Hopefully this virus won't be too intense, as a universal cure for all diseases isn't predicted until the year 4304. Though, by then Baba Vanga says that humans will no longer live on Earth, but on Mars. So, make of that what you will. Number 2. A Change in the Earth's Orbit There's a lot of wonderful things to like about the planet Earth. Lush fields, flowing waters, and its orbit exactly where it should be. Which is quite an underrated but fantastic trait of the big blue marble we call home. Baba Vanga made another worrying prediction about the state of the Earth for 2023. She predicted that somehow, something is going to knock Earth off of its orbit forever. The Earth's orbit has been altered before, but in this prediction the alteration is going to be much more significant, causing much more widespread effects. Now, it should go without saying that something knocking Earth off of its orbit would be very bad. If Earth somehow was thrown off its orbit by some terrible force, it would wreak incalculable havoc. Countries would be thrown into cycles of days and nights that would not last for hours, but months at a time. Think of the damage that would cause. Unending daylight would lead to mass sleep deprivation, global anxiety, as well as incalculable damage to our flora and fauna and wildlife. Crops would be ravaged and burnt, leading to a global famine. Unending days would lead to temperatures doubling, melting the ice caps at an even faster rate than they already are. This would result in massively rising sea levels and the flooding of coastal cities. Unending night wouldn't be much better, as it would make things very cold, and plant life would have no way to achieve the necessary photosynthesis, resulting in crop failures and once again, countless deaths. Interestingly, this is a recognized phenomenon called a polar night, and there's a town in Norway that experiences something like this. In Tromso, the sun doesn't rise from November to January. While this is fine for a Norwegian town, a polar night taking place in important farmland regions that are responsible for feeding massive portions of the population is a recipe for disaster. And that's not even mentioning how much easier that would make it for vampires to attack us. Number 1. An Alien Invasion One of Baba Vanga's most surprising predictions for 2023 is that this is the year we will make contact with visitors from another world. Unfortunately for us, us, these visitors will apparently not be coming in peace. She says that aliens will attack the Earth, and that during their invasion they will use technology in order to prevent us from using electricity for three days and three nights, and the Earth will be plunged into total darkness, with neither the moon or stars being visible. We've already gone over how reliant we are on technology in the solar storm entry, so imagine how difficult it would be for us to be suddenly thrown back to the Stone Age, and then have to try and fight an alien race who have extremely advanced technology, as well as a desire to kill us. Baba Vanga claims that this will not be the end of the species as a whole, and that 10,000 of us will survive. But, considering that we currently have a planet-wide population of 7.8 billion people, 10,000 survivors indicates only a 1.28% survival rate, meaning that for all practical purposes it would be the end of the world as we know it. Baba Vanga has predictions for humanity beyond this point, and some of them are truly incredible. They include things like the discovery of time travel, the colonization of other planets, underwater cities, and an eventual peace being made with the extraterrestrials. But, considering that if her predictions come true, there's only a 1.28% chance that any of this will be relevant to you, there really is no need for me to get into those right now. 